Hey everybody, I just wanted to uh, put together a little bit of a lesson on hiring and firing and uh, that may sound uh, a little bit blunt at times but actually uh, if you're doing it in all kindness the uh, it, it, it sometimes it's just the fact of being in business that you have to let people to go uh, let, let them go um, let me kind of get into this slideshow that I built but first of all I wanted to show you um, one of the guys that has documented some really cool stuff his name is Dave Ramsey and I know that uh, we've talked about him quite a bit in our our uh, classes but uh, he wrote this book called Entree Leadership it's a real simplified form of how to run a business from A to Z it's one that uh, you know, I wish it was around when I first got into business, but, uh, you know, because it is, he puts it together so simple and he, he just kind of cuts to the chase and also puts some things that, that anybody can use in their business. He does not one time talk about farming and ranching. And I think that's a good thing. Sometimes we separate ourselves and we say we're different. We are different. I mean, I love the fact that I get to work with livestock and I get to be out in fresh air and I, I get to work on the land and all that kind of stuff. But you know, when it gets right down to it, business is business. And the business, most of us need some help in our businesses. So we're gonna do some hiring and hopefully less firing. Okay, let's get on into uh, the presentation that I put together for you. And uh, I'll, I'll just go through it a little bit. I like the way that this is said. Getting good people hired pretty much takes care of the firing part of the equation. I, I found that to be very much so in the fact that if I can just get a good hire, I, I don't have to worry about the firing part of that. If I do it right, if I take the time to do that, okay? Um, and usually that, that entails properly vetting the right person. And we talked about decision-making, putting the right person on the right seat of the bus. And that, that has everything to do with it. Why? Uh, why be better at hiring? You know, this is probably, well, Dave Ramsey has a chapter in his book, but, you know, this could be a book. And it's something that we get better at. I don't think we quit learning our whole lives if we're in business, is to get better at hiring. Some people are better than others. I think it's more of, a, again, most of these things are just skills that we practice. And if we avoid them, we don't get to practice them. Anyway. Some obvious things that uh, we can pull out of this whole discussion are that turnover and rehiring is bad for business. Proper hiring creates a better team. Of that. It's like glue when you put together a great team. I, I've had some of the best people work for me. They're a lot smarter. They're more creative. They're, they're harder working. They're, they're all kinds of things that... Uh, comes out of a team that has the cohesion and 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 just sticks together and and just has a positive force that moves forward. There's far less drama if you do a good job of hiring. I, mean, I think you probably know what I'm talking about in drama, but you know there's less gossip. There's just you know all the things that negative things that come about with people talking about other people. It doesn't happen or occurs a lot less in a place where the hiring is done with intention and with patience. Hey, listen, bottom line is turnover is expensive. It affects your profit and loss. The more people you turn over, the, the, the more effect it has on your profitability of the business. You have to stop everything. You have to stop what you're doing. You can't be productive in your business if you're rehiring all the time. 
Training and retraining again is just more dollars. New hires require a whole lot more time. Because everybody, you know, these are just really obvious things. But I see businesses and I, I look, if I look back in our past, these are some of the things that we did continuously. Every year, it was like we had to reload, rehire, and retrain. And it was extremely frustrating. And then learning some of, of these methods, and this is not going to do it. Uh, it's going to somewhat, as fast as we're going to go through this material, it's going to be somewhat of a disservice. But um, I, because my whole message throughout intertwined in this this whole lesson is that you need to slow down so that you can hire effectively and intentionally why be better at hiring because morale just continue morale problems with the team are awful when you're continually getting uh new people uh, this there's a momentum that takes care of itself and and this can infect an organization in a very negative way if you have new people coming on board all the time you know the, the opposite of that is a, a you know a very positive energized business that everybody wants to work for is growing and you're getting more hires in there that's infectious too but in a whole different way than you know going the other way so Keep that in mind as we go through this lesson. The first three steps to great hiring, as I mentioned before, are take more time, take more time, and take more time. And we're not going to describe it in this lesson so much, but the more times that you can effectively touch base with the potential hire, or your people can, if you've got more than just you in your organization, the better off you are. So you, you're forming impressions, you're getting, you're gathering more information and, and all that kind of stuff. So the next three steps is to anticipate, anticipate, anticipate. And the reason we have to anticipate is because hiring is so important. It's the backbone of your business. Anybody you hire is going to represent you and your values and your mission. So if you don't anticipate it, you can't take the time that it requires to get the right person on the right seat of the bus. Okay? So you have to anticipate in order to make that effective. Some of the key concepts are that you're on the higher all the time okay if you're managing a business if you're the owner manager or you're the manager then you're always on the hire you're always looking for potential team members you're looking for the next best person to make your business go to the next step all the time all the time all right I mean and you're keeping track of those people you're keeping in touch with them and I mean, you may not have the position right then, but as soon as you do, you contact him and, and you get a hold of him. Don't miss out on a chance to interview somebody. At any time, you might be going home on the bus, you might be at the airport, you might be on vacation, and you run into the most phenomenal person. Don't miss out on that chance okay at least the initial phase one part of an interview which would just be a real quick drive-by as we'll describe later interview to see if they might be interested if, to see if they might have the passion so to see with whether they'll fit within your team thirdly parade them get them in front of people that you respect Get them in front of your other employees. All those kinds of things. Get a, another impression. Anybody that you respect or is with, involved in your business, let this person get to know them. You might not even let them know that you're interviewing them. 
and you might be getting them in touch. Okay? So keep those things in mind. Key concepts to continue that is take care and be generous to your current team. Okay? Uh, and this is, uh, people kind of, they scratch their heads when I talk about this one. Take care of them. I mean, if it's a ranch, then if they are really good team members, then what are you going to do for them? Well, I mean, after a probationary period, if they've been there a few years and they're just, you can't do without them, then let them run some cows. Be generous with them. Many people, of course, I mean, give them a beef or half a beef or, or uh, pay for some of their groceries. Provide some health care insurance for them. Be generous. Be generous with their pay as much as possible. Now, if you're just starting in business, I, I talked to, just to give you an example, a person not long ago that said, uh, well, we give, you know, annual bonuses and all that kind of stuff. That was after the first year. And, I, and my first question was, are you profitable on the first year? Because I know that, I mean, it's the same business we've been involved in, you know, for 30 years. It's a really tough business, uh, kind of like ranching and farming. And uh, I know that, you know, profitability is pretty questionable if you say it's on the positive side of the P&L statement right from the get-go. And, uh, and bonuses in, 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 in my world have to be tied to profit sharings, and profit being a positive profit. But anyway, my, my advice to that young man was simply that, I mean, you can't afford to give bonuses. I mean, you're just trying to tread water right now. So anyway, what are some things that you can do that are in the beginning of business that will show your generosity? Well, I mean, invite them over to dinner. If it's a single guy or a gal, then I mean, have them over more than once. Have them over multiple times. If they're living on your ranch and you're providing a place to live, have them up so they don't have to cook. Uh, these are some things that uh, the generosity that you can, I mean, just an example, I'm sure that you can think of other things. Later on down the road, if they are loyal to you and they're just the hardest working thing since sliced bread, then by golly, let them run a few cows. Maybe bump that as the years go on. I know ranches that have had people work for them for over 20 years. That's a long time in this career. Uh, you just don't see those kinds of things in other kinds of businesses. We've had people work in our outfitting business year after year for over 20 years. So, and, and one of the reasons was is because we, by the, uh, only our trust in God, have actually become more generous we paid them what they were worth. We started giving them more things that they could offer. Um, you know, in, 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 if they like to hunt, let them hunt on your place, for Pete's sake. Um, get, if you've got at least out to an outfitter, make an arrangement for them to do so. Those kinds of things are really important. Be generous to your people. Train them. Okay, how do you do that? Well, of course, you're going to give them great instruction one-on-one -on, -one on how they can get their jobs, how they can win in their jobs, and those kinds of things. But send them off. Make them more valuable to you and pay them when they are more valuable. Constantly, continually emphasize that you're, you have missions and you have goals and you have values. Uh, you know, one of the, the biggest payoffs for an employee is the fact that you would, would bring them in and actually ask them for contributions on these goals and missions that you've set and actually pay attention to them. Third thing, be transparent. Don't hide your plans and intentions. I remember this clearly when I first started business. It was kind of like I'm paying you for doing a job. I will tell you, it, everything I tell you is on a needs-to-know basis. Hey, listen, what we owe our people 
is to be as transparent as possible. And I mean, if nothing else, we tell them more than we should about our business. I mean, I'm not telling you to tell you what's going on between you and your wife and that sort of thing. They can figure that out since they're working on the ranch or the farm anyway without you telling them. But tell them where you're headed, where you're going, where you're going to be, all those kinds of things, and what you want, you, your vision. That's, I mean, the whole thing we've talked about missions, missions extensively is to just be open to your people. People are the most important part of your operations. Big cattle ranches, most people will say, well, it's the kind of cattle you're raising or the number of cattle and things like that. No, it's the, the, the family that you've got helping you do that that's way more important than the cattle. And uh, I think the longer you're in business, you'll probably agree with that. If you don't, then uh, you can send me a note and tell me I'm way off, okay? Here's one that is often overlooked is in all businesses, but I can point out glaring missteps in agriculture is that we just don't meet with them on a regular basis. I mean, don't waste their time. Don't waste your time. But have, in order to be transparent, you've got to get together with them. Make it a Monday morning meeting. If you got to meet with them every morning, okay. Uh, especially at first so that you're you're using it as a training type of thing but on a regular basis get together with them and and have a time set up so you can intensely listen to their feedback that will go a long way with your people if you have a customer based type of a business like an outfitting business okay survey Survey every single customer you got there and make sure that your employees see the great reviews because you've been doing a great job of training them. That's why. And mention to them that if they have some questionable reviews in a kind way, especially in the beginning, say that these do not, these kind of behaviors do not fit our values. This is not what we want to to be conveyed to our customers. Maybe we have to backtrack or, or step back a little bit, retrain a little bit, mention to them, um, and those kinds of things. One of the things that surveys have done for us is that we nip in the bud some potential poor behavior or values we don't want conveyed to our customers, okay? And especially, I mean, People want responsibility in the end, expect a lot from them, and they will actually produce, your results will be huge when it comes right down to it. Hiring, well, you don't want to practice these things too much or you're going to have a lot of turnover, but it's going to take some practice. I mean, hey, listen, there's nothing wrong and I think it'll go for a long ways in with your your team. If you tell them, hey, listen, I'm not the best at this, but I'm getting better. And that's where I'm headed. So practice. Evaluate what you've been doing. Hey, listen, if you've got a bad hire, maybe document it. Write it down. And try to practice some of these decision-making skills that we've talked about. And then get right back out there and do it again. Best advice and we're going to cover it real shortly at the end of this lesson is fire before it gets hostile. Fire before you get too frustrated. Fire before there's shots fired back and forth is the best. And I'm telling you, just to be honest, that's not how it happened early on in my business career. This is not how it happens in business typically. Okay, so anyway, what I, uh, I'm going to stop here so that you don't have to just listen to me drone on and on and on, and I'll make another video that you pick up where that one left, this one left off. All right, thank you for listening.